So I am super stoked about today's episode. And reason being, this is my first interview episode. And I have a lot of these interview episodes coming to you, but the reason why I wanted to share this one first is because this woman, Susan Dampier, who you're going to hear in this interview, has now become a quarter million dollar accumulative earner in less than three years in her network marketing opportunity after leaving a successful career in finance. But more importantly, she did this while having six kids and two grandkids. Now, let me just put this into perspective. She has six children. The oldest is 25, and the youngest just turned one. So the reason why I wanted to start off my interview episodes with Susan is because for any of those people that may be listening to this that have no kids, one kids, two kids, three kids, this woman literally has no excuses, and it will motivate you so much and she shares so many nuggets and takeaways and, and great, great information on how to build your business when you are a mompreneur and you have kids. So I hope you guys enjoy this episode. It's going to really fire you up. So enjoy. Welcome to the Network Marketing Made Simple podcast. I am Scott Aaron, and each and every week, I am going to come to you with simple, short, and powerful tactics and tips on what you can do each day, each week, each month, and each year to grow your network marketing business, income, and team. And just remember, network marketing is not easy, but it can be made easy with simple steps to bring you success that you truly deserve. Welcome to episode 56 of the Network Marketing Made Simple podcast. And if you are a new listener, welcome. And if you are a returning listener, then welcome back. Uh, And as always, before we get into today's content, if you are a new or seasoned network marketer, and you are typically building your business through the means of Instagram and Facebook, which a lot of people are teaching, and you don't yet know about the power of LinkedIn and how it can help you explode your business, then head over to my website, www.scottaaron.net, fill out the form to schedule a free 15-minute discovery call with me where I can learn more about you, your business, what you're struggling with, and how I can help you. Now, I'm very, very excited about today's episode. This is my first interview, um, and I wanted to put together an amazing lineup for everyone, all the listeners here, because obviously I want to show people the simplicity of team building and network marketing. And when I was going through thinking about all the amazing individuals that I'm connected to, this woman came to mind right away, and her name is Susan Dampier. And obviously you heard her bio, it's incredible, but I always love people to share themselves so I don't have to tell their stories. So Susan, first, welcome to the podcast. And if you could introduce yourself to the audience, who you are, and a little bit about your background. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me on this call today. I'm really, really, really excited to connect with you and just grateful to share my story with others. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. Absolutely. So as you mentioned, I, um, I'm a mom of six. I have six children uh, ranging in age from one to 25. I am also a grandmother and I found network marketing by accident three years ago 
when my husband wanted to improve his health. And at the time I was uh, working in a career in wealth management. I had a 22 year career in the financial services industry. So it's been really a remarkable journey over the course of the last three years. I was brand new. I'd never really even heard of network marketing or knew what it was all about. And uh, the fact that we've experienced such incredible, incredible success and um, improvement in our lives in so many different ways is really all because of network marketing. So I am just such an ambassador for it. And I just, I love it so much. And I just want the listeners to, to hear again that you have six kids ranging from one to 25. And, and the reason why I love sharing your story is because you and I offline, obviously we're friends outside of this podcast and everything. We've spoken many times about the excuses that sometimes people have instead of making those the reasons why they should be building their business. And, and I use you as the perfect example, someone who has six children. So before we get into the guts of what we're going to talk about today, what, what advice could you give that mom out there that maybe might not have six kids, they might have a kid or two kids, but they're feeling overwhelmed and they just feel like they're all over the place, but also more importantly, Susan, and I'm sure that you've heard this before, they feel guilty about taking time away from their family to build their business. What, what can you say on that? Well, I can say that I completely, my heart goes out to them because I resonate with that so completely. That is really where I was when we started. I lived in a perpetual state of overwhelm. I felt that there were not enough hours in the day to do just the bare basics that I needed to do for my family. So when I found this opportunity, I thought, oh my goodness, how am I going to find 15 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour was completely out of the question. So what I did was I really was just very brutally honest with myself about my time and the way that I was squandering it. So mm. now I, I am truly very intentional about my time. And when you control your calendar and control your the hours that you're investing, either spending time with your family or investing, building your business, it makes such the difference. Because before I had no control over my time. I basically was chasing my tail around. I was always in a constant <laughs> state of um, reaction yeah. rather than being proactive. So I think really just being very honest about yourself and what your day truly looks like is number, you know, that's the number one um, area that I think that people can right off the bat, find ways to improve upon that. And that's going to help in everything that you do, not just if you're trying to build a business. And I think the important thing that, that you just touched on is I don't think there's any mother or father or parent that doesn't go through that. It, it's just the normal progression of the business. When you're, when you're stepping into entrepreneurship, you know, leaving the employee mindset and reeling, realizing that, that you're left to build this on your own Number one, it could be a lonely place. Number two, sometimes you just don't know where to begin. And that's what I want to I talk about right now. So, so you've been in network marketing for how long now? For three years. We just had our three-year anniversary. Well, congratulations. And at this, Thank you. at this point, how big is your organization? We have an organization of 2,500 individuals. Wow. And we just hit the quarter million mark. I uh, actually just saw earnings. that. Yes. So it's very exciting. We're very, very happy. We feel very blessed and fortunate to have this opportunity because it is really transforming our lives in every way. And, you know, three years and already at a quarter million dollars accumulatively. That's uh, that's incredible. And and twenty five hundred individuals in three years, that's almost a thousand people a year. And and you, you break down the math even more. That's about three people a day joining your organization. So I really want people to understand that. And obviously, Susan, you're not doing it by yourself. And, and this is what we're going to talk about. Obviously, you have a team building with you. So yes. going back to the beginning, go, let, let's let's go back three years ago. You're just starting. Uh, your network marketing journey. Obviously, your husband was the one that said yes, yes first, and you kind of followed suit. Yes. When you decided, you know what? Yes, I I want to build this business. What was the biggest challenge that you faced when you started? 
time was the first challenge. I, I just really didn't think that I had the time in order to do it. And then I, I just had so much self-doubt and I was very shy and very timid. I had a mindset that I had no idea what I was doing or how I was going to succeed because I am not a salesperson. And I, and I truly still to this day do not feel that I'm a salesperson. I feel that I am a helper of people. So when I was able to shift my mindset out of the, the place that I was really living in where I just had so much self-doubt and I was constantly telling myself that I couldn't succeed, that I shifted that mindset to think that, okay, I'm really, I'm here. I want to help people. I want to do more for my family. It changed everything in me. It created that shift because it, I really was able to just take that, um, take that focus on all the things that I didn't believe in myself and put it someplace else. So I put it in my family that I wanted to create a better life for my family. So I figured out a way. I think that a lot of times people get caught up in, you know, what they can't do or how they have to do something or trying to figure it out when all you really need to do is put the focus on your goal. So my goal was to just create a better life for my family and then you make it work, you figure it out. So I think that really was huge for me when I was just first starting out because I didn't have a coach. I didn't have a mentor. Uh, the, the girl that enrolled us into our company wasn't doing it for, as a business. She was just simply my coworker. So I didn't have any guidance. I didn't have somebody to tell me you need to do A, B, and C. I was just literally watching videos, trying to find content on YouTube. Really just, I, I really just wow. figured it out along the way. And that's so amazing because I really feel there would be so many more successful network marketers if they realized that they were the ones that were in control of their success or their failure. Because I, I think this goes back to something that, that we spoke about, which is the going from the employee mindset to the entrepreneurial mindset. Sometimes that shift is really hard for people to do because you're your own boss and, and you know, there's, there's no employees, there's, you know, you're not calling in payroll, you have no one to report to but yourself. And then the person that enrolls you, they might not do it, they may quit along the way. And then you're like, well, what should I do? And, and something that we both agreed upon is that you have a, a, a true blue builder, no matter what happens with the person above you or below you, they're going to an event. So if right. the person that enrolls you, if they're going to an event or not, it doesn't matter. You're still going to show up. And, and that's what I say to people. You know that you will have a person that's running with you. Whether you go to that event or not, they are going. And right. I think that's really important for people to know is that don't put all of the weight of your business on someone else's shoulders because they're not going to do it for you. They, they're going to be there to support you, guide you, and answer your questions. But at the end of the day, you got to figure this thing out. And I know this is a weird analogy, but you're going to get it because you know, you're a mother. Um, and what the example I use to some of the women that I coach is that, you know, they're like, well, you know, network marketing is hard. Learning LinkedIn is hard. They keep using this, this thing. It's difficult. It's hard. And I said, listen, and if they're a mother, I say, listen, if you were able to give birth to a child, you can do network marketing. Right. <laughs> and you did that six times. So I don't want, I, 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 it's not that I don't have time for people's excuses, but people say, choose your heart. Pick your right. heart. Absolutely. You know, it, is it difficult, you know, carrying a child for nine months and then birthing it and then feeding it and taking care of it? Absolutely. But you don't complain. You don't even, right. be, but it's, it's, it just comes natural. Anything that you're passionate about that you want to do can come natural to you. So I, I think that's, it's just a beautiful testament to you and now your entire organization that you weren't going to wait for your enrolling sponsor to say go. You said go when you were ready to say go. And I think that's really, really key for people to understand. Absolutely. And, you know, another one of the things that we did right when we first started is we read the book, A Four Year Career. Mm. And that was such a great um, opportunity for us to say, you know what, this isn't something that we're just going to try on for size for a month or three months and see, let's, you know, let's see if this will work. We committed, both my husband and I, we're going to give this four years and we're going to see what we can do with it. Because like anything else, it was so 
brand new. Neither one of us had any experience. I, I honestly didn't really even know what network marketing was. Yeah. So how are you going to try something for three months or six months or even a year? You, you cannot learn the skills and learn the things that you need to do in order to be successful in such a short period of time, especially because I was building my business part time. I had a 50 hour a week career in finance. I was pregnant. I had a family. So I literally was building it in little pockets of my day. It wasn't like I was investing eight hours a day every day. It was pockets, you know? So people shortchange themselves. And that would be really just a bit of advice that I could just offer is don't shortchange yourself. Don't shortchange your dreams and your future. Give yourself the time and the opportunity to become the person that you are required to be Mm. in order to succeed. I love that. And, you know, it's another thing that you just touched on. Tony Robbins talks about this all the time is, you know, he says to, to parents, he goes, how long did you give your kids, uh, you know, the, to try to learn how to walk before you told them, just give it up. They're not going to do it. Right. And, and the answer is that you, you did it. You, you, they, they fell down, they get, got right back up. And it's the same thing with network marketing. If you think that you're going to come into network marketing and you're going to figure it out in a month, three months or six months, even two years, you're wrong. Because right. even the most seasoned network marketers are looking to learn something new every single day. They don't, you know, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to speak for everyone, but obviously in any kind of industry, there's people that just get comfortable with where they are and they're fine with it. But, you know, someone that wants to be a true leader like yourself, they're always looking for ways to grow and expand and impact more lives. And I think that's the beautiful thing that you and your husband are doing. So- that brings me to my next question. So everyone talks about the fact that they don't know how to build a team. They don't know how to paint the picture for people or get someone started. You know, they, people don't have an issue getting people to try the product that they're selling, whether it's shakes or oils or hair care, or skin care, whatever it is. They don't have a problem with that. The problem that these people have is then getting them into the business side without just being a sharer. They want to get someone that wants to come in and run. So if you enrolled me into your business and I said, you know what, Susan, I'm ready to build. I want to do this. What's, what's your onboarding process like of assisting that individual, that person to get moving with their business? Well, first, you know, everyone is different. So I'm going to connect with that individual and really figure out what their goals and what their dreams and what their aspirations are. Not everybody has the same goals. Not everybody wants the same things out of life and not everybody really has the same desires. So it's about connecting to everyone individually and really figuring out what makes them tick. And then it's sitting down and setting very some clearly defined goals that will allow them to create what, what the, what they want in their life. And, you know, there will be some short-term income goals, some midterm, and then some long-term goals. And it's just finding that success along the way that creates that momentum because you want to really be able to get somebody going and give them something that's going to create confidence and create excitement in them. And, you know, that is just, you know, getting their business off the ground and running, you know, sharing with a couple of people. And I am very hands-on when I have somebody brand new starting, I will always coach their first few people right alongside them because I want them not to have a very stressful experience. I want them to learn. I want them to be able to ask questions, but more importantly, I want those new people to have an amazing product experience and an amazing experience overall. So that really just creates that duplication because those people are getting an amazing experience. The new people that are coming in, they're also getting a fantastic experience. So it's really just, to me, that's just been such a great way to sort of bring somebody in, show them what I do. So they're really, they're right beside me every step of the way. I love that because it's not about running an adult daycare center, but when you're building a team, you have to let people know that you're there for them. But number one, you're, you're supposed to be developing other leaders and, right. and you have to make sure it's duplicatable because 
if you're going to be, you know, doing too much coddling and you're taking too much of your time with each individual person, when you give that person like, listen, I'm going to work with you for a little bit, teach you all the ins and outs. And then you got, I got to set you free. You, right. You, because at some point, Susan, people start to, they have to figure it out on their own. You can't, absolutely. you can't be, and you know, I remember going to an event and uh, there was a woman who said, you know, whenever her team reaches out to her, she said, just Google it, you know, yeah. Just just search on the end. And that's the thing. You, w- with a click of a button, you can find anything you want. And here's the other thing. If you want to know something bad enough, you're not you going to figure it out. You're going to figure it out. You're not like right. if, if, if I want to go get sushi tomorrow night, I'm not going to call Su- Susan. Listen, I want to get sushi tomorrow night. Where should I go? I'm going right. to I'm going to go on Google and I'm going to search, you know, best sushi around me and I'm going to make that decision. So I think it's important for people that are listening to this to understand. Yes, it's OK it's okay to handhold people in the beginning to get their feet wet. But once the, right. once the wingies come off and they're, right. and they're swimming laps in the pool, you don't have to watch what they're doing because they're going to have to figure it out. So I think that that was perfect. Yeah. Now, um, anything else you want to add to that? No, not at all. It was perfect. Now, a, a, cu- a couple more questions before I let you go. Uh, number one, what would you say is the number one tip that you can share with the audience of what they can do to start building their business? So, so maybe they don't have an upline like you did. Maybe they're, they're, you know, they call themselves orphans, right? You Mm -hmm. hear this all the time. I'm, I'm on, I'm on an orphan team. Um, I'm on an inside of an inside of an outside up, upside down leg. So if someone's on their own, what would you what would you say is the number one tip that you can give them to start building right now? So the number one tip that I would say is is first of all, really get very clear and connect with why you want to do this. There has to be so much clarity with that. You cannot just, you know, be haphazard about why you want to do it because it's going to get hard. And if you're not clear as to why you're doing it, then you're going to give up. You know, you have to, there ha, your why has to be bigger than any fear, than any frustration that you're going to have. So that's number one is just very, be very clear about why it is that this is important to you. And then use the resources that are available to all of us. And resources might be, um, you know, there's tons of books out there that are amazing. You've written incredible books that can help network marketers Thank you. as far as learning, you know, prospecting. Um, go GoPro is an amazing book. I, I yes. recommend everybody read GoPro and um, the Four Year Career. That's what I read when I first started. Um, go to your company's training website. We, I feel, I'm very blessed with the company that I'm partnered with. They give us all the tools and all the resources that anyone can plug into immediately, whether or not you have a team or an upline, but go to your team's training uh, resources uh, or your company's training resources and really look at that because the company's putting that there for all of us to use. And a lot of people don't even know it exists. So that's a really incredible Um, you know, resource that most people have, depending upon your company, I'm sure that there are incredible resources out there. So be very diligent about making sure that you're uncovering the tools and the resources that are available, because you don't have to reinvent the wheel. In most cases, the wheels already been created, find a system that resonates with you, plug into it, and then we all can personally improve upon things. But you know, when you're first starting out, you want to simplify things as much as possible. Um, hopefully, you know, you have somebody who can mentor you and guide you. But in a lot of companies, you can work with somebody that's not financially connected with you. They'll yeah. answer questions. They'll help you. So, you know, reach out and, and ask for help if you need it. Um, but don't give up. You know, don't, don't feel that it's not working and then quit. Because chances are you've only been doing it for a couple of weeks or a couple of months. And that's not long enough to, to uh, th- throw your hat in. You know, you have to keep going. Yeah, I always say to people that, you know, there's millions of ways to succeed and only one way to fail, and, and that's to quit. So if you don't quit, you're going to find a way of how to succeed. I think that's beautiful. So two more questions, and then I am going to let you go. Number one, what is the best way in, in, that you have found um, 
in your three year now career as a professional network marketer, what has been the best way for you to find new builders in your business? So, um, you know, this is, there's a couple of different ways, you know, number one, really dig into your own personal organization, build, look into your downline. If you've, if you're somebody who's been in the business for a long time, chances are you have somewhat of an organization already in place. And, you know, it's all about connecting. You can reach out to anyone in your organization, introduce yourself as a leader on their team and that you want to connect with them. You want to learn more about them. I have connected with more people that are already in my business than, than I could even tell you because they're there. They've already said yes. They've already enrolled. Maybe they didn't have a great experience because mm. the person that enrolled them wasn't a great coach. Maybe you can you know, uncover somebody who really is looking to change their life and they've already said yes and they're there already. So don't not look, look already, you know, already look in your organization. Don't not look at that. Um, another amazing place that I've been just recently through your mentorship and guidance is on LinkedIn. Thank you. LinkedIn is amazing. It is incredible because you're connecting with other like-minded entrepreneurial um, individuals, people who are business oriented and they're professionals. So you're having conversations with people that really want to speak to you. They're interested in hearing about what you do. And that to me has just been so exciting because a lot of times, and you know, I think a lot of network marketers could relate to this. You know, when, when we got started, you know, three years ago, some people might have got started five years ago, 10 years ago, you're always told, you know, talk to your family, talk to your best friends. You burn through your warm market so quickly. Yeah. And then you feel that you're just going around in a circle and talking to the same hundred people over and over and over and sending the same messages over and over and over again. And that gets really boring and it's not effective at all. <laughs> yeah, it's everybody knows what you do, right? Yeah, exactly. So if they, yeah. it's if not, they, if not they a surprise. Do it, they'll reach out to you, right? Yeah, and, so and I, well, I, I, I always say that, you know, um, you, what, I read this blog on poormanblogger.com. People have heard me talk about it before. And, and this guy did an interview with all these successful network marketers and he came up with the nine tips to successful network marketing. And one of the tips was do not have your friends and family in your business. Now, that's not to say that that may not happen, but he says, you know, have them on the products if they want to have the products because right. they're going to know what you want to what you're doing. I mean, they're, 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 there's no way they're not going to see it, but make sure that you keep the relationships with your family as that keep the relationship with your friends as that. And if they want to learn more, they can always ask, but you have to be looking for ways to establish and create new connections, new rapport and new relationships. Absolutely. Yeah. And LinkedIn has been great for that. I love it. It's, Thank you. It's really fantastic. Well, listen, you know, the, the, the funny thing is I consider myself a chef of social media. If I give you the recipe and you follow it, it's going to produce results. And obviously you are uh, a, a fine, fine example of that. So um, thank you for the endorsement. I really, really appreciate it. Oh gosh, you're welcome. I thank you for turning me on to it because <laughs> I was hesitant. You know, I, 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 bought my coaching um, program with you a year ago and, <laughs> and didn't use it for an entire year because I was about to have a baby. I mean, there was a reason behind it, Yeah, but um, I saw reason. the value, you know, and when we had that first conversation, it wasn't like we had to do two or three calls. Oh, I you jumped right in. Immediately. And it was just really not a good time because I was labor was happening in a couple of days. And, you know, I, I, but now I look back and I was like, gosh, I wish I would have engaged, a, a, you know, a year ago because it has been so amazing. Just awesome. uh, just great new energy coming into my business. And I love it. All right. Well, I appreciate that. So final, final question before we wrap. And I, I'm, I'm big on transparency and vulnerability. So I, 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 I want you to take a second and actually you can be proud of yourself and you can gloat. It's okay for right now. Um, I believe that people do need to pat themselves on the back. So if someone was to ask you this question, what would you say? What would you say is the greatest obstacle that you have been able to overcome in the three years of being a professional network marketer? So I really think that the greatest obstacle has been my own personal um, 
my personal development, you know, I really, I, I was a codependent. I was an over obligator. I was a people pleaser. I had so much self doubt. I had so much, uh, lack of self worth. I, I really struggled with my ability to succeed in this area. And it wasn't necessarily because of network marketing. It was because of all the things that happened to me throughout the course of my entire life. So the fact that I was able to really just dig deep and say, you know what I need, I don't need, I'm committed Mm -hmm. to making these changes in my life because it's going to help me in every single area. And I did the work and I'm still doing the work. I'm continuously, like you said, you know, somebody who is a a committed leader, you're always wanting to grow. You're always wanting to to better yourself. So the fact that I was able to move beyond that self-doubt and move beyond that shyness and that apprehension that really held me back for so long, to me, that's the biggest blessing because it really, it shows up in every area of my life. Love that. And and before we sign off, uh, I know you have your own podcast now. So uh, what is your podcast? Uh, what is it called? Where can they listen to it? And how can people connect with you on social media? Absolutely. So yes, I just started my own podcast. It's called The Leading Life. And it has been such a labor of love because my husband really wanted to do this for so long. And then one day I, you inspired me. I just did it. <laughs> one, one day I'm like, okay, we're doing it. So um, that is going, we are loving it. It's been so exciting. Um, and that can be heard on Spotify and Apple, um, Google, you know, all the different podcast platforms. And uh, to connect with me, uh, you can join me on my personal website, susandampier.com. Or you can re- see me on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. Um, just simply search my name and you'll find me. Awesome. And just for the listeners, I will put this information in the show notes so you guys can go back and connect with her and listen to her podcast. And, uh, and just remember, you know, as I state, in the network marketing is not simple, but it just takes simple steps to create the success that we truly deserve. So, Susan, thank you so, so much for being a guest on the show today. Just so grateful for you, your friendship, your leadership, and just the heart of service that you bring each and every day. So thank you for being here with me today. Thank you so much. I am really just honored to be here and I appreciate you and I'm so grateful for you and your friendship as well. Absolutely. So everyone, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Please enjoy the rest of your day and I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye everybody. So again, thank you so much for checking out today's episode. And if you can go over to Apple Podcasts or iTunes and leave me a five-star rating, write a review, and share this with anyone that you feel could benefit from this, I would be so, so grateful. And again, if you would like to learn more about LinkedIn and how I can personally assist you in growing your network marketing business, head over to www.scotterron.net and schedule a free 15-minute coaching session with me today. Have a great day, and I'll see you guys next time. The podcast you just heard was made using Anchor. Ever thought about making your own podcast? Anchor makes it really easy for anyone to get started. It's a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing podcasts. Best of all, it's 100% free. Sign up now at anchor.fm slash new. That's anchor.fm slash new to get started.